How's it going YouTube? SpecM Auto is back with another video today. Today's video, we're going to attempt to resolve the airbag light issue. Alright guys, so as you as I just said, we're gonna be fixing the airbag light today, or at least trying to. So you guys are probably wondering, um, how do I know what I'm fixing? Well, to be completely honest with you guys, I really don't know what I, I don't really don't know. I am making a good guess because I have uh, gave I gave my local Honda dealer a phone call the other day and talked to the service advisor about bringing my car in to see you know what's wrong with my uh, airbag system that's causing the light and before I go in there and spend a hundred dollars on a diagnostic because I don't have a scan tool advanced enough to scan airbag systems if I try to hook my uh, scanner up to it it's just gonna say that there's no code so it's pretty much useless so of course I have to go to a dealer or a professional shop for that but he said before I spend a hundred dollars on uh, diagnosing the system and figuring out what's triggering the light he gave me some very common things that these uh, civics get when the, uh, that can trigger the airbag light one of them is the seatbelt receiver. So this little doohickey down here is, uh, I guess, known for this era of Civic to stick. And he was telling me if it's if it's sticking, it can sometimes call it can trigger the airbag light because obviously it's a faulty part. You know, it's malfunctioning. It's not functioning properly. And I told I told the guy on the phone like it's kind of funny that you said that, <laughs> that the uh, seatbelt buckle sticking can cause the airbag light because that that's exactly what mine's doing. Um, let me see if I could demonstrate exactly what I mean. So let's put on my seatbelt. Get you guys over here. So sometimes this uh, seatbelt receiver will stick, and sometimes it's like kind of hard to push in. Sometimes it's kind of sticks when you push to push it out and then sometimes when I you know unbuckle my seatbelt get out of the car and then get back in the car let's say you know a couple hours later or whatever when I go out again it usually like once in a great while it's not always but like you know when you first get in the car and you turn the car on the seatbelt light flashes and it beeps you know letting you know hey your car's turned on please put your seatbelt on kind of deal Sometimes the seatbelt light doesn't come on at all as if I'm already wearing my seatbelt and I'm like, uh, okay, what the heck's going on? Uh, one day I saw that and I pushed the button down and it like was sticking like it was stuck or something. I pushed real hard a couple times and I heard a, uh, it made a loud click and then it undid itself and the seatbelt light uh, came back on again, of course, until I buckled my actual seatbelt. So today I'm going to... Uh, swap this part out this is the seat belt buckle from the driver's side seat from the original seat that was in this car before i did the lxs interior swap so of course this receiver is gray because it's from the original interior whereas these are black so it's going to be slightly mismatched um i'm hoping maybe over time i can make it match more with like maybe some vinyl wrap or something because i got plenty of that so yeah so i'm going to be unbolting this seat today and i'm going to unhook this unbolt it out it just consists of a screw on the cover which goes in this little hole here and then this bolt comes out of course because this is the bolt that holds the unit into the seat so we're going to go ahead and take the seat out uh unbolt the seat belt receiving unit and then slap this other one in and hook the seat back up, bolt it back down, and hopefully cross our fingers that the airbag light is resolved. Otherwise, I might just have to suck up and give them the $100 diagnostic fee. Let's get to it, guys. All right, guys, so it's always safety first. Safety first should always be a priority. So we're gonna lift up our hood, open it, and we're gonna disconnect our battery. So just remove your negative cable. That's pretty much all you need to do is just remove your negative cable and that's it. 
now your battery's disconnected. I would leave it sit for about 15 minutes to a half hour just to play it extra safe, let all the computers and whatever inside the car shut down before you touch anything with airbags. Always be safe with airbags. I'm not responsible for any be anybody's injuries and damages if you attempt to do what I'm doing here. Alrighty guys, it's been about a half hour since the battery got disconnected. Here's our seat. So now the way we take this seat out, we have one bolt here, one bolt over, over here. Hold on, I can't see it. It's under the floor mat, I think. Yeah, it's under the floor mat. There's a bolt here, bolt here. Then we go back. Oh, got to unlock the door. And then if you scoot the seat up, there's a bolt under there and a bolt under here. I got so much crap in my car right now. Sorry, you guys. Yeah, but when we take the four bolts out, the seat should be able to easily tilt back where you can disconnect your wiring. And then at that point, you can just pull the seat right out. So let's get started with that. Alright guys, the seat is back out of the car, as you can see. I am so glad everything with bolts are the same size. This whole time I've been using an extension and a 14 millimeter. I tried to show that to you guys earlier, but it kept blurring. But yeah, so to get this seatbelt unit off, you just need to take this bolt and take it off and it should just come right out. <laughs> Alrighty guys, before we throw it back in the car, we need to make it official, tie the knot. See that little screw hole right there? We're going to take this plastic cover off and swap it over to that one so we can just have our cover. I would have put the original one on there, but the cover for that one is at the storage unit. And I obviously don't feel like running all the way over there for this little plastic piece. So I might as well just go ahead and complete the uh, black black seat belt swap thing even more by doing it this way so see it's just easy as that pops off here's your piece now you'll just come over here and transfer it little nice little transplant here goes on hold on a second goes on like this i believe let me get this on real quick All right, so completely ignore what I said it just a second ago about positioning this. I had it completely upside down, but I got it uh, on correctly and tightened down. So here's our complete 
piece so now all we do is just throw it back in the car and then we'll see if we solved our airbag light issue let's get started ladies and gentlemen <laughs> Okay guys, this is all this is the moment that we've all been waiting for. Sorry that I'm out of breath. It's just all this and the fact that it's literally 95 degrees outside. It's super hot today. But anyway, the moment we've all been waiting for. I'm incredibly nervous. I'm really crossing my fingers hoping that this really resolved my issue. Because I, I really, really, really want to save that $100 uh, diagnostic fee. And having to potentially call call other shops around and all this and that. And if something else is wrong with it and getting fixed, etc. Anyway, let's hook this battery back up. And uh, let's see. Ooh, a bug flying around my face. Anyway, uh, let's see if this fixed our problem. So as you can see, the seat's back in. Seatbelt's back on. And the new seatbelt receiver is in. Well, the new old receiver. <laughs> anyway, let's get in here. Uh, dome light is on, so that means there's power now. Let's go ahead and start it. Come on, come on. Oh, ah, oh, dang, man. Fuck, I was, fuck, I was worried about that. <laughs> that sucks, man. I guess it wasn't the uh, receiver then, but the good news is, despite that not working out in my favor, um, I have this not stick anymore. There is one more thing I want to try with the uh, airbag light. Maybe there's something I need to do to uh, reset it. I did see a YouTube video before where you uh, get one of the airbag wires out from under this uh, cover here. And you like stick a pin in and out of it. And I guess that somehow resets it. I don't know. I'm not I'm not too familiar with it. I haven't heard about it besides from that one YouTube video. So I guess I can see if that works real quick. Um, I'm not going to film that part. If you guys are interested in seeing that video. I'll try to leave that link in the uh, description down below. Uh, so I'll be right back. I'll see if this works. Alright guys, so I had a situation. So obviously now it's been a few days since the last clip. Basically an update of what happened. After that, that ordeal, I ended up taking my car to a local shop. I asked them if they could do the airbag diagnostic for me. Sure, they could. But then I had to set, set an appointment. And I asked, okay, well, I have, could I do Saturday? So, because I wanted them to do Saturday because I'm off work Saturday. And they said, no, we can only do Friday because on Saturday we're only open for four hours. So, 
there goes that out the window. And on top of that, they're more expensive than Honda themselves diagnose it. I think they said that their starting price was like 110. Honda does it for a hundred. So, sure, ten dollars is not much, but ten dollars is ten dollars. And if I'm spending an ass load of money on a diagnostic, then I'm gonna take the lesser option, obviously. So, you some of you guys might be wondering why why don't I diagnose it myself? Well, that's an easy answer, guys. I just don't have the proper equipment to do it. I literally just have a twenty to thirty dollar Walmart scanner, and that's literally it. It's it's just a basic scanner that can read basic engine codes. It's not advanced enough to do airbag codes at all. So, of course, I don't have the proper equipment to do it. Otherwise, I definitely for sure would. And I would definitely make a video on it, but I don't have the equipment, guys. It's too expensive. Uh, I work a full-time job that doesn't pay much. So, um, and pay, uh, YouTube doesn't pay me. Uh, you know, with monetization or anything. I do the videos for free, you know, I just do it for fun out of a hobby when I'm not working. So that's the point of that. But anyway, uh, so of course my only option is to take it to a place that actually could professionally get it done and professionally diagnose it and fix it if need be. If it's something that I can fix myself, then I will definitely fix it myself. And I will make the repair myself. And I'll swap I'll swap over any other part that I might need to swap over if it comes down to it. If it's something that I can't just simply swap over and it's something I can't fix, then yeah, I'm gonna have to get it fixed at Honda or another shop that I know can do the same thing. But more than likely, I'm gonna take it to Honda for that if it comes down to it. And hopefully, the God, it does not be too expensive, which I'm sure it will since it's a dealer shop that I'm going to be taking it to, you know, original manufacturer. Uh, but yeah, guys, uh, it's a really shitty situation overall. I really wish I was able to eliminate the airbag light, but, you know, sometimes you win some, you lose some. It's just the way life rolls, guys. Um, I, got, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please drop a like. Drop a comment down below, share, subscribe, all that fun jazz. And most importantly, after you subscribe to my channel, please don't forget to ring, ring the bell, you know, hit the bell icon, so you get notified of each upload. Alrighty guys, stay safe out there, have a good one, stay humble.